Hi guys, Rick Davis here with you again from LearnTVProduction.com. Today's video, we're going to have a look at the best entry-level mirrorless camera in the marketplace. Manufacturers are Nikon, Fujifilm, Sony, and Samsung. All very reputable brands. All of these cameras today we're going to look at do shoot video and do take still photography, of course. Okay, so first up I want to have a look at the Nikon 1J4. This is Nikon's mirrorless camera. It replaces the J3 that they had come out with a few years ago in their compact system cameras. The J4 does have a few additions on top of the uh, what the J3 had. It has a 10 by 30 millimeter lens, one of their VR lenses, which is vibration reduction. You can use the full range of Nikkor lenses, but of course you will need an adapter. Um, and this is the benefit of mirrorless cameras. Not only do you not have the whole mirrored system on top of the camera, so they tend to be smaller, but you also have the ability, the interchangeability of lenses. And, uh, and Nikon's no different. You can use their full range of Nikkor lenses here. The camera itself is an 18.4 megapixel with Nikon's CX sensor, which is a little smaller than the rest in this comparison group. It is about a 13 by 9 millimeter um, uh, sensor. Still gives you great, great quality pictures, but it is a little bit smaller. Uh, the LCD screen on the back of this one is 3 inches. Again, we know that with mirrorless cameras, you do not have a viewfinder to look through. Uh, instead, you have to look through an electronic mirror, and on the back of the, not a mirror rather, but an electronic screen. It does come with a flash, automatic pop-up, very handy to have. Don't have to worry about an additional um, flash that has to slide into a hot shoe on top. You can record video in both 1080 and 720, P and I, progressive scan as well as interlace. And it records movie in the QuickTime MOV format rather than the smaller MP4. Uh, both very acceptable for, for capturing high def, but the MOV does give you a little bit more detail. Of course, it will take up a little more space in your, uh, your storage card, but it gives you a little bit more quality. And both those formats can be easily used in just about any video editing system out there now, so that's not really an issue. When it comes to storage, the Nikon uh, 1J4 uses a micro SD memory card, a little bit smaller than the, the standard um, SD uh, card, but um, nonetheless, it can easily capture everything you need to capture. Okay, up next is the Fujifilm X-A1. Now, this Fujifilm camera replaces their X-M1. Uh, this is their latest in the compact system camera or mirrorless camera category. The XC uh, 16 by 50 millimeter lens is the one that comes with this camera. It has a built-in optical image stabilizer, which is very, very handy to have as well when you're shooting video. It has 16.3 megapixel with a CMOS sensor. This is the, the not full size, but it is the larger sensor, what's known as a four-third sensor. It is approximately 23 by 15 millimeters. This is the same sensor that, same sensor size that both Sony and the Samsung product have on them as well. This has a tiltable 3-inch LCD screen on the back. Uh, the tilt is great anytime you are shooting anything but at eye level. If you're holding the camera down low or up high at an angle in any which way, it is really nice to be able to tilt the screen slightly to be able to see what it is you're looking at. It does come with a flash, a built-in pop-up one. You also have an additional hot shoe if you want to add additional light. It shoots video at both 1080 and 720p. Records video in MOV, again, much like the Nikon, rather than the MPEG-4 format, which is a little bit smaller. And the Fujifilm X-A1 comes with a full-size SD memory card, which I personally prefer for handling. It's a little bit larger just for your fingers. Up next is the Sony NEX-5T. This replaces Sony's NEX-5R uh, in their mirrorless camera class. It comes with a power lens, a 16 by 50 millimeter lens. It will accept uh, Sony E-mount lenses, 
or you can get an adapter and it allows you to use uh, any of the Minolta Konica glass in front of it with their adapter on it. Um, the sensor on this one, uh, it's a 16.1 uh, megapixel and they use Sony's what they call the Exmor CMOS sensor which is again the 4 thirds 23 by 15 millimeter. Now the LCD screen on this Sony is very very nice. It's an LCD 3 inch screen but it is uh, not only does is it tiltable but you can flip it 180 degrees great for when you want to get those selfies and uh, you can just hold the camera out at arm's length um, it does not come with a built-in flash it has an external flash only it is supplied with the camera uh, but you do have to install that on top of the camera. It will shoot video in 1080i and 1080p and also 24p. 24p is a really nice format. It gives you a kind of a film look, uh, which is kind of fun to play around with, but you can shoot in that as well. Uh, Sony has their own uh, Kodak to use, which is known as AVCHD, uh, and they shoot only in the MPEG-4 format. It comes with a built-in stereo mic. Now the nice thing about this camera with the power zoom, when the power is off, it actually retracts the lens a little bit. So it's a nice feature. It actually makes the camera just a little bit smaller for handling and storage. Last up in our comparison group is the Samsung NX2000 interchangeable lens digital mirrorless camera. It has a 20 by 50 millimeter lens. This one has got the largest uh, in, in terms of uh, megapixels. It captures the sensor at 21 megapixels. It uses the CMOS 23 by 15 millimeter sensor as well. Uh, the screen the monitor on the back of this is the largest of the group in the comparison uh, clan here at 3.7 inches again a tiltable monitor uh, this one has an external flash only it is supplied but once again you have to um, slide it on to the um, to the shoe on top it records 720 and 1080p video and recording format is in the MP4 format, not the larger MOV, the QuickTime uh, uh, Kodak that I had talked about earlier. Storage on this one is with the micro SD only, the smaller of the two standard chips uh, storage um, disks now being used. One thing I will say about using any of these cameras to shoot video, they are just fine to shoot video um, you know, people moving around and most, most things like that if you're going to social events. Where any of these cameras are not that superior, it's when you're shooting quick action sports. Uh, if the lens is very wide, you can do it. But if you're trying to get in tight on shots and moving around, you'll struggle a little bit compared to a, a standard camcorder. So keep that in mind. I would never recommend buying these cameras strictly for shooting video. So that's my lineup. Where do I stand on which camera to go with? I personally would go with the Fujifilm X-A1. It had just, to me, it had more pros than cons. I like the fact that it has the, being somebody who works in video primarily, I like the fact that it shot in MOV rather than the MPEG format. It had the full size uh, SD memory cards. Uh, it had the tilt on the screen. It had interchangeable lenses. Uh, it, it had just about everything I want. The only downside, it was a little bit larger than the rest. Do you know what? No matter which camera of this four you chose to go with, you would not be disappointed. They are all high quality products. They all fall in about the three, rather about the, the four to five hundred dollar range. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it gave you some insights that will help you in your choosing of your next mirrorless camera. Um, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you'll know when I put out another one and hopefully it will help you as well. Um, I do appreciate all your comments and if you feel like giving me a like that's always appreciated too. Thanks for watching guys.